former President Donald Trump this morning criticized a New York judge who placed a gag order on him just yesterday. He called the ruling illegal and un-American. That judge cited Trump's history of, quote, threatening and inflammatory remarks about people involved in his legal cases. Now, that move prevents him from commenting publicly about witnesses, prosecutors, court staff, and jurors in his upcoming criminal hush money trial. That's over a payment to an adult film actor back in 2016. Let's bring in CBS News chief election campaign correspondent Robert Costa now. Uh, Bob, you know, you and I had the pleasure on Monday of covering Trump's dual split screen court moment. And this isn't the first time, though, that we've seen Trump impose with a, a gag order. In the past, he just pays fines for violating them. In your point of view, could this be effectively enforced? It's unlikely to be enforced. He's an active candidate, <clears throat> excuse me, for federal office. And former President Trump has shown repeatedly that he largely ignores gag orders, believe they're an affront to his free speech rights. And there's no sign yet that his lawyers or the candidate uh, are going to listen to this gag order in any way, though they know they can only do so much. Uh, we saw when Trump got gag orders in the civil fraud case, or at least some direction from the judge to not speak up about certain elements of the case. He generally abided by that. But this is a, ca a candidate and a client who his habit and routine is to lash out. And we saw the same with the E. Jean Carroll uh, civil trial. That entire case was based on uh, Trump's public remarks about her despite uh, being found liable. We know that tomorrow is set to be the first hearing on Trump's Georgia election interference case. For folks at home keeping track, that's one of the six big cases Trump is facing. Um, and the judge recently ruled that lead prosecutor on um, that case, Nathan Wade, should resign from the case. What do we expect to hear on that front tomorrow? While <clears throat> Mr. Wade is no longer on the case, uh, Fonnie Willis, the district attorney of Fulton County, remains on the case despite all of the scrutiny about her personal conduct. And she has vowed to plow ahead here and continue to prosecute in this sweeping way many people who are alleged to have taken part in a conspiracy to overturn the election result in Georgia. This is a case to watch as much as the New York case is because now that all of the Fonnie Willis uh, deliberation seems to have ebbed a bit, it's going to move forward, and it could be a trial that takes place closer to the election. And we know from uh, public statements Donald Trump has made, statements his legal team has made, that delaying these trials is part of the strategy, especially with this election uh, coming up. In the classified documents case down in Florida, there do appear to be um, aspects of it tied up in delays. What's the latest on that front? How long could it continue? And what would be the effect of, of the delay? It's tricky for the judge, Eileen Cannon, in the classified documents case, as well as Tanya Chutkin, the judge, in the January 6th case. Both of those cases playing out on the federal level. They have to first see if this criminal trial over hush money payments in New York finishes in a six-week period, let's say sometime in May or June of this year. And then at that point, with all of the different issues confronting them in their respective cases, they have to make a decision, will they really have a trial in the summer or even fall before the election? And that's a tough decision for them in terms of timing and logistics. And uh, that's something that really hovers on the horizon, especially on the classified records case, as all of these issues uh, continue to come to the fore. Yeah, so much happening on these fronts. Robert Costa from our D.C. Bureau, thanks very much. Thank you.